The first teaching given by our spiritual masters in the Bhakti tradition is that we are not this body. You are not this body. What are we? We are part and parcel of the supreme absolute truth, Advaya Gyan Paratattva. We are spirit, Jeev. So our bodily identifications, they are a hindrance in our spiritual evolution. We do not say, I am hand, I have a hand. So we shouldn't think, I am American, European, Russian, African, Chinese, all these kinds of things. These are external bodily identifications. This is what our spiritual masters teach. They are temporary designations, you could say coverings over the true nature of the self. So unless we free ourselves of these attachments, these designations, we won't be able to realize our true self. It's hard for people to get a grasp of this in a practical way. It's like a concept, philosophical principle, but in our bhakti path, we give very fine details about the true nature of the self. Other traditions don't so much go into this, they te deal more with external moral issues, um, without dealing with the original, um, like you can say, the original root issue of the first anarta, the first thing that's an impediment in our spiritual growth is Swarup Brahm, forgotten identity or mistaken identity, like the Born series. It's like he thought he didn't know who he was, so he was always searching and it kept this kind of great dilemma within him. So unless we understand who we truly are and are established in that Swarup Dharma, Dharma, our constitutional nature, we're not going to be happy and thriving in this world. So this is kind of one of these root issues that we need to um, work on. Um, when we talk about the soul, it has dynamic uh, reality. It has this, we have a spiritual form, a name, family. It's not just impersonal, or like we're m merged within the impersonal expanse. We have real personality and name, residence, relationship, family, all these kinds of things. So, how are we going to achieve that swarup, that dharma, that position? Uh, it requires a great transformation. How can we get that transformation in our lives? Deep spiritual practice. Uh, sadhana. Sadhana bhakti. So through, that's why our acharyas call it the, the science of self-realization. It's a, like you have to put through, put in the effort, like for a scientific experiment, you have to put in so much effort to finally get the result. So this is sadhana. It's a practice. So the gross body is made up of earth, air, fire, water, air, ether, and then the subtle body is made up of mind, intelligence, ego. There are the different knowledge acquiring senses, the eyes, ears, and so forth. The karma or active senses, the, the karma senses. And then there's the subtle body, mind, intelligence, ego, as we said. So these are the different layers or coverings upon the soul. Mahaprabhu teaches us, Cheto dharpana marjanam, purify the heart, and then you can understand uh, your true swarup, your true soul nature. As long as you remain under the covering of the gross material body, then you won't be able to do it. That gross material body that you get in this life, you're one thing, that life, another thing, that will leave you. That's nasvar, temporary. Karma is temporary, meaning for this body, we have a certain limited amount of karma. When that karma ends, then we'll enter a new kind of body, material designation. So this is the cycle of sangsar, birth and death in material existence. If we give up attachment to this material gross body and relinquish the sense of being the doer, rather we are the soul, the witness, and we are trying to realize our spiritual potential, grow into that, then we are the true agent. Now we are more like yantra rudrani maya on the wheel, the machine-like wheel of material nature. Jananam Abhimadanam, again and again taking birth and dying. So the best practice for spiritual transformation in this age is mantra meditation through chanting japa. The greatest mantra, the mantra of deliverance is the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we implore you, take up this chanting, see the results for yourself. In Sastra, it is said that this Chanting of the Mahamantra is Madhuram Madhuram Etam Mangalam Mangalanam. It's the sweetest of the sweetest things and grants the most auspicious of all auspicious things. So, 
but the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So chant the Maha Mantra and gradually you can see a transformation come about in your life. There's a detailed process. It's not just chanting. We should chant in the right association, in the right environment, throwing the right kinds of lifestyle, culture. So all these things are given in our bhakti practice, bhakti tradition. So we welcome you to subscribe to the channel and we'll be teaching you so many more things about this bhakti culture. Thank you so much for your time. Tune in again tomorrow for another video. Haribo. Radhi Radhi, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel down there. Share with your friends, ask a question in the comments. And check out our website, creepy.tv, for courses to support us and for our articles and more. Haribo.